Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning, even more specifically on artificial neural networks. So in this video I'm going to show you all how to create your very own program to classify clothes from the Fashion Manist data set using artificial neural networks. Now currently I'm on Google's website called colab.research.google.com and the reason why I'm on this website is because it makes it really easy to get started programming in Python, meaning you do not have to install Python onto your computer. You could just go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So let's go ahead and get started writing our code now. The first thing that you're going to want to do is click on File and then go down and click on New Python 3 Notebook, where a new tab will open up for you and a new cell where you can start writing your Python code. Now the first thing that I'm going to do in comments is write a description of what this program is going to do. So I will type the number sign and then description and again this program classifies clothes from the fashion minist data set using artificial neural networks. Okay, now I'm going to create a new cell by clicking this code button and in this cell I'm going to import the libraries that we're going to use throughout our program. So I'm going to import the machine learning library called TensorFlow as TF and then from TensorFlow I'm going to import Kiros. Next I'm going to import NumPy as NP and I'm going to import matplotlive.pyplot as PLT. And then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left and hopefully I don't get back any error messages. Okay, it looks good. I'm going to create a new cell. In this cell, I'm going to load the data set. So I'm going to create a variable called fashion underscore minist and set it equal to kiros dot datasets dot fashion underscore minist. Next, I want to get a training set and a testing set of data from our fashion minist data set. So I'm going to create a few variables. One will be called train underscore images, which will contain the images that we're going to train our artificial neural network model on. And then another variable will be called train underscore labels, which will be the labels for each of those images. Next, I'm going to get our testing set. So I'm going to create a variable called test underscore images, which will contain the images that we're going to test our neural network on. And I'm going to create a variable called test underscore labels, which will contain the labels for those test images. Next, we're going to set that equal to fashion underscore minist dot load underscore data. And let's run this cell. Okay, so that looks good. We're going to create a new cell. Now in this cell, I want to view a training image. So I'm going to create a variable called img underscore index which will contain the index that we're going to use for getting the image. So I'm going to set it to some number like 0. Then I want to get the image that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to create a variable called img and I'm going to set it equal to train underscore images at that index position 0. Now of course we already have a variable for this so I'm going to just use the variable instead img underscore index and then I also want to print the label so the image label is at the train labels at index 0 as well but of course we have that image index variable that I created so that way I can just change this one index and then it'll change the information for both the training images and the training labels. Okay. Next, 
I want to show the image. So plt.imshow img. And now if we run this cell, we can see the label for the image below is 9, and we can see the image here. Now you may not be expecting the number 9, maybe you expected something like ankle boot. Now each of these labels are values between 0 and 9 inclusively. So there's a total of 10 unique values. The number 9 maps to ankle boot, the number 8 maps to bag, the number 7 maps to sneaker, 6 maps to shirt, 5 maps to sandal, 4 maps to coat, 3 maps to dress, 2 maps to pullover, 1 maps to trouser, and 0 maps to t-shirt. So our image label here is 9, and again that maps to ankle boot. So let's change this index to something like 3. Okay, and now we can see that our image changed and our image label changed. So this is image label 3, which maps to a dress. So it looks like we are looking at an image of a dress. All right. So let's create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to print the shape of our, our training images and of our testing images. And this will tell me how many images I have in both of those data sets. So let's print train underscore images dot shape and then print test underscore images dot shape and run this. Okay, so this tells me that in our training images data set, we have 60,000 rows of 28 by 28 pixel images. And in our testing images data set, we have 10,000 28 by 28 pixel images. Okay, so that's a lot of images. Let's create a new cell. And in this cell, we're finally going to get started creating our neural network. So let's write that in comments. Create the neural network model. So I'm going to create a variable called model, and I'm going to set it equal to keras.sequential. Okay, and inside of here, we're going to give it a few layers because we're basically going to be setting up the architecture for our neural network. So just type keras.layers.flatten, which will be our input layer, and then type input shape equals 28 by 28. So the flatten method here will reduce the dimensionality of our images. Next, we're going to create our hidden layer. So just type curos.layers.dense. And in this method, we need to tell it how many neurons we're going to have. So I'm just going to choose 128. And then we need to give it an activation function. So I'm going to choose the ReLU activation function. And another way that you can write this is tf.nn.ReLU. OK. And then we're going to give it an output layer. So just type kiras.layers.dense. And this layer will have 10 neurons because of our, because of the number of unique labels that we have. So we have 10 unique labels, 0 to 9. So we're going to have 10 output neurons. OK. And we're going to use the activation function called softmax. And again, another way of writing this is tf.nn.softmax. OK. So let me go ahead and run this. It looks good. Now I'm going to create a new cell. And in this cell, we are going to compile the model. OK, so to do this is pretty simple. Just type model.compile. And inside of this method, we need to give it an optimizer. So the optimizer function 
is a function that seeks to minimize a loss function. So we're going to be using the the atom optimizer here. So just type tf dot train dot atom optimizer and then left parentheses and right parentheses. Now we need to give it the loss function that we're going to be using. So the loss function is essentially a method of evaluating how well our algorithm models um, are on the data set. So how well they how well they perform on the data set or a, a method of evaluating how well they performed on the data set the model did. So anyways, loss is going to be equal to the loss function that we're going to use. And we're going to use the categorical cross entropy loss function. More specifically, we're going to use the sparse sparse underscore categorical underscore cross entropy um, loss function. Okay, so I'm using sparse categorical cross entropy as opposed to categorical cross entropy because our labels are all integer values. All right, and then last but not least, we're going to use some metrics for our models just so we can see how how accurate our model is. So here, put in accuracy. Okay, and that should do it. So let's run this cell. And all right, that looks good. We're going to create a new cell. And now we're going to finally train the model. Okay, so to do this, just type model.fit method. And then put in the train images. And then the training labels. Okay, and then the number of epochs and epochs are the number of iterations over the entire data set. So we're going to do five epochs. And then we're going to give it a batch size, which is optional. By default, the batch size is equal to 32. So we don't really have to put that here, but we're going to do that for now. And the batch size tells us the number of samples per gradient update for training. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and start training our model. But it looks like I got an error message. It's because I misspelled epochs. So let's put that back here, epochs, epochs. There we go. And now let's run this. OK, so now our model is being trained. And we're going to give it some time to finish up. It should be pretty, pretty quick because we only have five epochs here. And like it is going fairly fast. OK, so it's done. Let's create a new cell. And in this cell, we are going to evaluate the model. So to do that, just type model.evaluate. And we're going to evaluate the model on the test data set. So we're going to put in test underscore images and test underscore labels to see how well our model is at at classifying these images. And so it looks like our model is about 81.1% accurate on the testing data set. OK, so let's create a new cell. Now in this cell, we're going to make a prediction or classification, right? So we're going to get the model's prediction. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable called prediction or predictions and set it equal to model.predict method. Inside of this method, I want it to print the, the labels of, of the first five images. So to do that, I will put in the test images and I will tell it to get me all of the images from index 0 up to index 4. So I put the number 5 here because it's not inclusive. All right, so it's going to stop at index 4. And then I want to print the predicted labels. So to do that, just type print 
and then predictions and what we see that we'll get back is going to be a little weird and I'll show you how to um, how to fix that or it's not really fix it's how to make it appeal easier to read so let's go ahead and run this cell okay so we get back this mess is what I would call it so what are we looking at here well we are looking at the probabilities of each image being a specific label. So we have 10 different labels and we have five different images. So right now what I've highlighted is the probabilities for the first image. So there should be 10 probabilities here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we want to basically return the the index with the highest probability because that tells us the likelihood of that image being classified as some label. Now luckily for us each label is or each label corresponds to its index so that means that the label at index 0 is equal to 0, the label at index 1 is equal to 1 and so on and so forth. So if we get the highest probabilities index, by default, we're also getting the label. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use a, a method called argmax to do this. So np.argmax. And let me close this parentheses over here. And we want to get the maximum index for each row so that's for each image and to do that that means that we need to set access equal to one okay so now let's run this and we get back these nice labels so it looks like the the label for the first image is a 9, the label for the second image is a 2, the label for the third image is a 1, the fourth is a 1, and the fifth is a 6. So now I want to print the actual label values and to do that I just type print and then test underscore labels and then I want all of the labels from index 0 up to index 4 and so let's run this and it looks like they both match okay so that's really good that means that our model can accurately predict the first five images or accurately classify the first five images correctly alright so let's go ahead and create a new cell and what I want to do is I just want to print the first five images. So to do that I'm going to write a for loop. So for i in range 0 to 5 I want to I want to show plt.im show the the test image test images at position I and then of course we have to do plt dot show here to show each one of them alright so let's run this okay excellent so now we see we get back the first five images okay so that's pretty cool um, let's make them grayscale so here I would just type cmap equals gray and now let's run this all right so now they're all in gray scale okay and you know maybe you want to load in an image or something like that make a prediction using this model and then see that image well then let's make sure that uh, I show you how to resize it so that you can show the image as a 28 by 28 pixel image and you'll also be able to resize it for 
um, possibly making a prediction with that picture right because all of these images are all 28 by 28 pixel images so I'm going to create a variable I'm going to call it first underscore image I'm going to set it equal to test underscore images at position I now of course this will be whatever image you decide to upload then I'm going to set first underscore image equal to mp dot array and that will be the first underscore image so we're going to be making it an array of floating type uh, floating points so the data type are floating point data types and then I'm going to create a variable I'm going to call it pixels and I'm going to set it equal to first underscore image dot reshape where we're going to reshape that image to be a 20 a 28 by 28 pixel image okay so now this shouldn't affect our current image because it's already a 28 by 28 pixel image but if you have any new ones that are not 28 by 28 pixel images hopefully this can resize or reshape that image for you so let's run this now and it looks like everything is good so that's basically it I really hope you all enjoyed this video I have many more videos on Python um, and on machine learning, so be sure to check those out, and on neural networks as well. I have videos on C programming and Java and many other programming languages, so be sure to become a subscriber on my channel and check all those videos out. Um, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.